This is the second video in a two-part series on Cabinets of Curiosity. In part one, we looked at organizing and supplementing the collections that we all have. This video will focus on displaying those collections in attractive, accessible ways, creating a cabinet of curiosities that uniquely represents the owner and their passions. Just like monarchs, aristocrats, scholars, and gentle people have been doing for centuries, we all collect things that we're curious about. That's how the Royal Society began in England, and many collections from that period became donations for major museums and continue to enrich museums today. If you enjoy visiting natural history museums, art museums, and history museums, imagine creating that in a corner of your home. In that grand tradition, let's begin. Whether your collection is so large that it takes over a huge room or so small it can reside on a shelf, it should make a personal statement about the collector. As the collection grows, so should the storage. This is when a cabinet can be helpful. In the previous video, we talked about using picture frames, shadow boxes, partitioned boxes, and jewelry boxes. The key is to balance visibility and access with storage. China cabinets, bookcases, hutches, shelves, dressers, and even tool chests with storage facilitate organization on a grander scale. So how do you do that without spending a fortune? My go-to is thrift stores. Last week, I saw a large glass front china cabinet, four feet wide, six feet tall, with three large drawers, two side storage cabinets, and multiple shelves behind glass in a thrift store in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The price was $49.99. Yesterday, I saw a large glass front cabinet top, no base, for $10 at the thrift store around the corner from me. It could easily be placed on a large table or desk. I often see glass curio cabinets at thrift and antique stores. So an actual cabinet is doable for a small amount of time and money. Today, I will be styling a formerly built-in hutch pulled out of a house probably built in the 1950s, sold in a garage sale 30 years later, and then passed around the family before landing in my home where it was given some molding on top and painted several times. What I like about it for this application is the triangular shaped shelf that makes it easy to layer the decor. Truth be told, it forces me to layer exactly what a cabinet of curiosities needs. I have given each of the three shelves a different organizational theme that I will explain as we go along. The top shelf is for all things literary. In the back is the framed essay on drunkenness written by one of my husband's ancestors in either 1858 or 1838. As beautiful as the penmanship is, it's impossible to read. Next are some of my great-grandfather's poetry books from the late 1800s. A Marble Bust and my grandfather's paperweight. Then a dried hydrangea, grass seeds in antique bottles, and a few pieces of faux greenery for color. The bottom shelf is for natural sciences. Three old books on trees. A frame with pressed botanicals. 
a vase with coleus that's rooting. My microscope. A seashell from El Salvador. More grass seeds with a different seed type. An unknown flower pod. An oak leaf. A geode. Some echinoderms. And a milkweed pod. I styled the middle shelf twice. The first time was for art, a handmade piece of pottery with paint brushes. Two small landscapes, one watercolor, and one acrylic. A tooled leather cover and a small book with Renoir prints. Two more antique bottles with seeds. Echinacea and Rutabecchia. And peony pods. The second styling of the middle shelf begins with a shadow box of fossils. But the main theme is birds. A bejeweled frame with a roseate spoonbill note card. Three bird books including the 1914 free book. A nest and feather from our yard. and a simple bird figurine. Another antique bottle with grass seeds. Looking at each shelf with a decorator's eye, I make sure each shelf has height from top to bottom and depth from front to back. Visual balance from side to side even though there is no symmetry. A variety of textures and colors, layers from top to bottom and front to back. The plant materials soften the sharp angles of so many rectangular objects and hard surfaces. The sequined picture frame is unexpected in the academia setting and adds a touch of whimsy to an otherwise serious style. Let me know in the comments what you think about the composition. I will be visiting another set of grandchildren in the next few weeks. Let me know if you would like to see a similar treatment in a child's room using their curiosities. I have no idea what the children have been collecting, but nothing will surprise me. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the curiosities of someone in your family, just tell yourself the most creative solutions and the best stories begin with the biggest challenges. See you next time. Based on today's standards, we were feral. We caught horned toads and other lizards. I was raised in the desert and that's about all there was. Charlie, a friend of my father's, even brought us a baby alligator from Louisiana. It disappeared in the house and we never saw it again. He did bite, so we didn't miss him really. Then there was the frog that disappeared. When we had a rare big rainstorm, we went tadpole and frog hunting. One of our frogs grew to be about 
an inch and a half long, so we logically wanted to play with it. We made him a little house in a shoebox and brought him inside. Something distracted us, so we left the box on a table next to the sofa. When we returned, he was gone. We looked everywhere. I wondered if the alligator had eaten the frog and became nervous to dig under the mess on the closet floor. But like all children, we quickly forgot the frog. A vague amount of time passed. We came home from school one afternoon, and my mother shared what had happened that day. It was the day the maid came to clean. Each week, my mother would instruct her to do a deep clean in a different area. This week, the maid was assigned to thoroughly vacuum under the sofa cushions. My mother heard a scream while she was working and came out to find the maid pointing at a perfectly flat, petrified frog that had been trapped where the back cushion intersected with the decking that supports the seat cushion. When we came home from school, we stared at that flat frog in total amazement at how flat it was. What happened to his bones? Why didn't he stink or rot? He was a greenish black color. I wish I could show you that frog. You would be amazed. My father promptly threw it away when he arrived home. He collected animals that looked like these that he bought in Africa. Everyone collects, they just collect different things.